um, I feel um, this is Deborah from Deborah Tavares with StopTheCrime.net, and I'm feeling as you very strongly that we um, connect uh, as much as we can while we still are able to connect to wake up as many people as we can, because possibly like you, you know, we're certainly feeling the media opportunities closing in on us, and more importantly. As activists, the um, the increasing uh, danger around the idea of conspiracy theorists and being set upon by people that are blind to what reality really is, and it's going to, I think, require a soft approach of getting information out when we're in the public, for sure, and uh, a hard-hitting approach when we have an opportunity like we do right now, of which I am very honored to be part of, of what we must do uh, in this world today. So thank you so much for having me on the program. Thank you, and I'm so grateful that you can talk with us today. And we will do a longer interview when uh, Ule Damegord, who is with us also, he is uh, going tonight to Sweden and for his tour to Sweden, Denmark, and Netherlands. But so we will do together, all three of us, a longer interview with you, maybe two hours, when Ule is back um, after 22nd of October. But uh, we would like at least uh, take some 30 minutes and talk uh, especially about what you wanted to talk with us today. And it's very important, but people know you from stopthecrime.net from primarywatcher.org and from your YouTube channel, stopthecrime.net new, and many videos in uh, different subjects. And it's about genocide. We are uh, genocided actually by the Illuminati and New World Order. Uh, and uh, uh, you have on your homepage uh, a very important uh, document the future in, is now NASA war document. It's on the stop, uh, stopthecrime.net. And uh, I'm showing also silent weapons for quiet wars. So anybody can, can take a copy there. But could you please uh, talk shortly at least uh, about the other topics that you have researched and you are very good in, you have read the documents and you have a great knowledge of the documents, of many documents. Well, thank you. Yes, um, as, as you know, um, I am a third uh, generation family home uh, builder. Uh, we built uh, predominantly in Southern California until we started to recognize the, the inability to build. We were um, certainly hit with um, the process through the planning and building uh, phases with the cities that were not allowing us to pencil out and make any profit on our building opportunity. And it wasn't until uh, I was able to spend time in the entire smart meter deployment after we decided to no longer build uh, that I started to realize the enormity of what we all face. And I, I was a keynote speaker at the conspiracy conference back in 2012 um, with a number of other um, people that sadly now have passed away, including um, uh, Trafficant and Dr. Stan Monteith of Radio Liberty and many, many others. And uh, it was in that process of researching the deployment and realizing that all of the utilities uh, worldwide uh, are controlled by uh, the Illuminati or Rothschild and all of those minions. And then, of course, realizing that the increasing danger that we're all in, being um, a mother and a grandmother and coming from a self-employed business world, and having to literally work around the clock to survive in self-employment. My work ethic is such that I am um, invested in research continuously as I was when I was reading city documents during the days of our uh, building career. And I've carried that forward. And what I would really like to say right now, and will certainly as you suggested at the beginning of the program, 
uh, have many uh, opportunities to interview, and I'm really looking forward to that because we can share the application of the danger that we're experiencing because it's all the same. It's just different methodologies, and they're run off of the same policies. And Ole, I was listening to one of your recent um, interviews about being able to see what the plans are and then bringing awareness to it and potentially uh, redirecting uh, false flags, et cetera, and I agree. So to that, I want to state we have plans, all of us, everyone listening. We have plans that have been approved in all of our cities. So what do I mean? I mean if you type in, uh, say, for example, Sweden, and you type in after uh, Sweden, uh, you would type in climate action and resilient plans. You can type in um, Greece. You can type in Athens, which I was reviewing when all the fires were happening there in Europe as we were being burned up here in Northern California, where I am. In fact, to date, the, um, the burn event that occurred in Sonoma County in October of 2017 still is the most costly fire in the history of the United States. And I can tell you, when we are set up on by intentional weaponized weather events and attacks, wherever we are and however we are presented with these attacks, that's when these climate action plans and resilient plans then are fully activated by a team of money monsters. And we can see that in advance. It's important to know these plans, to research these plans. They are pre-crime criminal plans based on genocide. And why do I say based on genocide? I, I would certainly urge everyone to understand the need to reduce CO2 emissions is um, literally eliminating the oxygen we breathe. We need CO2. They pump CO2 in greenhouses for plants to flourish. Uh, through the process of CO2, the plants uptake the CO2, and then we, that's how we derive our oxygen. And um, I have a couple of extremely important YouTubes. While you'll hear me um, talking about many of the plans in the United States, understand that these plans extend to every one of you that are listening. And um, people oftentimes say, well, California is the um, pilot or the uh, start of the operation of these plans. That is not true. Everyone is being confronted. This is a global assault, a massive, massive global change of unproportional change in our lifestyles on every level from eliminating gasoline cars. In fact, we're seeing articles now here in Northern California because, again, the resilient city policies and planners have moved in after the fires. And they're erecting cameras throughout this entire area. You're going to find that in any areas that are hard hit. They're going to say that you need cameras deployed for your safety so that they can see in advance um, any fires or the results of uh, dangerous events so they can send in um, people that can assist in these disasters. Well, part of that is, of course, true. Uh, in the, um, for example, here in Northern California, where Pacific Gas and Electric, uh, which is Rothschild, has just announced that they will pay for some additional cameras uh, to surveil this uh, entire North Coast area. Uh, and they include in their plans that they're going to be looking at water. And I guess I, I'd like to start with talking about water. Um, we're all facing water, but let me just finish up on the comment about the plans. When you look at the climate or resilient plans in your town that your local city um, uh, infiltrators uh, have um, approved in your cities. They're all approved. And let me explain how this works. As a builder, uh, you submit plans to a, sit a city to be approved. They, they are generally approved, but then they have to go through various city agencies to be finalized. And they have to go through engineering where they get engineering applied. 
So you have an approved plan subject to additional um, requirements. That's exactly what's happened with all of the climate action plans worldwide. They've been approved. This is a worldwide, this is USA Inc. and Earth Inc. We're all combined. There's no independence. There's no um, de defining any of us by borders, certainly with all of the intensified frequencies. There are no borders. There are no borders for the overhead aerial chemtrailing. Uh, it is a worldwide assault, a massive disruption of markets being created. So when you look at your plans in your local area, uh, you will find in those plans a list of the climate change health effects ex expected in your area. This, many people will say, well, Deborah, where can I move to be safe? Well, I recommend everyone before you make any move at all, particularly if you're electromagnetically sensitive, uh, there is really a very difficult, you know, very difficult to relocate um, other than in the country and of course taking some um, uh, evasive actions against the enormity of what we face with electromagnetic frequencies and mind control. But um, the climate action plans will tell you the kinds of devastating weather weaponization assaults you're going to get in your area. So you can decide when you're relocating what kind of assault you'd rather endure. In general, they're very similar. All kinds of increased storms, storm events. They're swamping wastewater treatment plants we've discovered, which in the United States and in Europe are nothing more than landmines, strategically placed so that when there's a tremendous rain event, those wastewater, we're talking sewer, we're talking poop water. So when you think in terms of wastewater treatment plants, use the right words. It's poop, it's human feces, human feces. And this is Big Pharma's intention of being able to pharmaceutically poison all of us, our groundwater aquifers, our cities, uh, our streams and creeks. You'll note that many of these um, sewer water treatment plants um, that are located near cities are by waterways because uh, they are able to also release some of the treated water into the waterways and that is then of course served up to us in our municipal water supplies. Make no mistake, there are SSRIs in the human excrement that and uh, chemo, radiation, many other poisons and toxins. In fact, we recently toured a wastewater treatment plant here in Northern California that will be uh, up on our YouTube channel on stopthecrime.net shortly. I would invite all of you to watch it. It's lengthy, it's about an hour and 20 minutes, but it saves you walking through the nauseating um, odor that these treatment plants emit. They are literally nauseating. And uh, it will allow you to see how these plants are set up. And certainly while we need to treat um, municipal sewer, um, what we've also learned, and this is, this is really breaking news, and I'm gonna break it here with, with you on this program right now. Uh, what we have found uh, is that in the treatment of wastewater and in the plans, the climate action plans and the resilient plans, where we are assured that we will all experience extreme heat events, we must understand what they've told us in an EPA document here, which we discovered as we were preparing to tour the wastewater treatment plant. We discovered in this document entitled Primer for Municipal Wastewater Treatment Systems. Primer for Municipal Wastewater Treatment Systems, EPA. Um, we discovered that the climate change plans tell us with the ex experience, that we will experience extreme heat events. And we're told in the EPA document that I just referred to, that heat reduces the capacity of water to retain oxygen. So they're deoxygenating our water supply. And here is the quote from that EPA document under thermal. It says, heat reduces the capacity of water to retain oxygen. 
in some areas, water used for cooling is discharged to streams at elevated temperatures from power plants and industries. Even discharges from wastewater treatment plants and storm water retention ponds affected by summer heat, affected by summer heat, can be released at temperatures above that of the receiving water and elevate the stream temperatures. Unchecked discharges of overheated wastewater can seriously alter the ecology of lake, stream, and estuary. And this is why right now in Florida, there is a, a state emergency on the toxic algae blooms because of the introduction of heated water and the sewer water into the uh, water supply. And also, uh, Europe is affected the exact same way. So it's very, very important to understand that in normal conditions, all of the bacteria that would be present in the water or in, also in the sewer treatment plants would be um, dissolved uh, by oxygen. And oxygen helps to break down the sewerage. Well, by eliminating the oxygen, not only in the water, but in the atmosphere, which we have discovered they've also done, people are not understanding, again, the fact that the uh, plan to reduce CO2 emissions is genocide. It is reducing oxygen. It is er the strangulation of Earth. It is strangling us, reducing oxygen and increases in toxic um, and, and poisonous uh, molds and mildews. We're certainly experiencing that. In fact, as I speak right now here in Northern California, which I'm about 60 miles north of the Golden Gate Bridge, uh, we are heavily chemtrailed. We have been very, very heavily chemtrailed. And during the fires of October of 2015, we were also extremely heavily chemtrailed those days of the heavy burn. Why? Because we were being bathed by the toxins of the ash and soot and there have been increased um, uh, ailments as a result of the intentional burning of poisons and toxins. I invite everyone that's listening, please listen to the YouTube that we have up called Plan to Burn Up Northern California. While you hear it being um, concerning Northern California, understand this is a global plan. Plan to Burn Up Northern California. There is a 30 minute um, section with the same title, Plan to Burn Up Northern California, where you will see me addressing the County Board of Supervisors here in Northern California after the fires. I believe it's now exceedingly important for those activists to make public appearances um, at their local meetings whenever possible where they can be filmed, where you can hold documents and talk logically about what we face and exemplify uh, yourself in a rational manner because as we are learning and as I've experienced with some targeted individuals that are being picked up without cause and put in mental hospitals uh, certainly saying they must evaluate their mental health if they talk about uh, 5G for example or if they talk about chemtrailing uh, I believe that it's becoming more important than ever to substantiate in visual terms uh, your um, your sanity, because certainly those people that are unaware are becoming more and more dangerous to people that are waking up, and I believe that this is a um, a planned division yet again of uh, breaking up the unity that we need in order to wake up more people so that more people can survive. So what do I mean by that? Olay, you've probably um, heard or are aware. Uh, and both you and Alexandra are aware of the uh, Deagle.com website. I have an interview actually with Dr. Bill Deagle here. I'm on a radio show every Monday at 2 p.m. Pacific time with Dr. Bill Deagle. He's a genius. He has over a 200 IQ. And we discuss uh, the, this genocide plan. The name Deagle is a different spelling the last two letters than his name. But we have on YouTube, you can go to stopthecrime.net 
and you can listen. To, and here's the name of the YouTube, 5G Network, a global network for the calling of humanity. And we did this uh, specifically talking about the Deagle.com website that has interactive maps and charts showing the planned uh, numbers and percentages of murder rates, uh, extinction rates throughout the world. Here in the United States, the plan shows 83% population reduction by the year 2025. In Australia, for example, it's approximately a 53% uh, or a 50% reduction of population. The UK is in the 70% range, but it's an interactive map. That, that is their plans. You don't need to be in that percentage of extinction rate if you understand how they are destroying us. And two of the methods that are discussed for genocide in this plan is what we're seeing throughout the world right now. We're seeing increased homelessness and massive amounts of increased refugees. As a result of the fires, for example, here in Northern California, uh, that burned over 8,000 structures um, during that October 2017 directed energy weapon assault and, certain mind, and certainly mind controlled um, uh, uh, people as well. Uh, we've seen just a huge disappearance of people. It's been a tremendous um, brain drain here in the county uh, that I live in. We're also seeing a massive increase in homelessness because we have no rental housing. Important to understand that the Airbnb network that we all enjoy traveling perhaps, uh, visiting other countries, is all handled through Google. It is owned by Google. And why is that? Because uh, when you assign your property to an Airbnb, uh, you are under a contract with Google, and um, it is therefore taking that housing out of your local housing stock that would otherwise be available for local tenants to occupy. But homeowners that um, contract with Google certainly make far more money renting it three, four days a week or so at a time to somebody that's visiting. We're seeing that here, of course, in Northern California, which is known as the wine country. And um, we have visitors in San Francisco from all over the world. We have many, many Airbnb uh, housing opportunities. Understand, this is a stealth, weaponized approach of eliminating local housing stock and creating displacement. That is what this really is. While it is fun, of course, and makes money for people in the fires when people were desperately looking for short-term housing, they had to, in many instances on the coast, where there are many second homes in Google contracts, they would have to move maybe four, five, six times uh, within a couple of month period of time because they were only able to live under this con contractual agreement that the homeowners had for two weeks or so at a time, and they had to move on. So I'm I'm talking about this because displacement is going to be the reality of the genocide program in the sense that they're saying that people psychologically and emotionally will be unable to adjust from being moved out of rural country areas into cities. Now, um, I want to talk quickly. I know I have limited time and I'm really looking forward to getting back with both of you and have further discussion, but I would certainly like um, everyone to look up C40 cities. That's CAT40 cities. I'm going to discuss this now. This is the next step beyond climate action plans and resilient plans. These are the funding teams that are coming in to all of our cities with the money and changing our cities completely. An example of a change here in Northern California is a saying, diesel free by 33. Now we're talking about diesel as a fuel. Diesel free by the year 2033. I want everyone to think for a moment what eliminating diesel in California and in your town is gonna look like. Massive disruption. I also want everyone to realize they're eliminating petroleum, the use of petroleum. We are being transitioned into electric vehicles. It says that in all of our rebuild uh, of the burned down homes, which 
uh, sadly, 60% of the insurance policies here do not cover the rebuilds, forcing many people to downsize dramatically and or to move out of the area. Insurance companies are also all part of the Rothschild takedown. But having said that, um, we're, we're just now uh, reading that um, ditch your gas. So go to stopthecrime.net and go to the link that says kiss your gas goodbye. These are global plans. We've been talking about this for years in the climate action plans because as builders, we saw elimination of gas and we were stunned that no one was commenting on this. Well now, there's having sold the idea of fossil fuels and the fact that we've been running out, which we never have, that was just a, a scientific fraudulent lie by uh, Rockefeller to create the idea in the Ford Foundation, to create the idea we were running out of fuel. Well, now they're going to be telling us we've now run out. We have to now have electric vehicles. Of course, that will incarcerate us into these mega cities and into the C40 cities that I'm going to talk about right now. And this is extremely important, extremely important. Um, what, what are the C40 cities? Well, let's talk about who's involved in these C40 cities. We're talking about MasterCard. MasterCard, they say, is, using, is, is being a funder as a technology leader. And they're committed to becoming a driving force uh, in the private sectors of cities. And they are also a management network which seeks to support cities in delivering strategies and measures that reduce greenhouse gas emissions. So let's talk about that. Again, those are genocide programs. MasterCard is backing genocide. City Foundation. City and the City Foundation support climate finance activities of the C40 cities with the goal of helping cities lower their carbon emissions. Another genocide um, global corporation, also funded by the UK government. Uh, they say that uh, supported by the UK government through the Department for Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy, which is the, an acronym, B is in boy, E is in excellent, I is in ivory, and S is in slander. Uh, they bring together responsibilities for business, industry, strategy, science, energy, and climate change. So funded by the UK government to genocide us. Funded by the Ford Foundation. Let's talk about that. The Ford Foundation is a funder. If you type in resilient cities, you will find out that the Ford Foundation, the Rockefeller Foundation, the World Bank are behind all of this. So the Ford Foundation is a funder as well in support of the C40 cities to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions and mitigate climate change. We know that climate change is the deliberate large scale manipulation of the Earth's weather through intentional geoengineering pro processes. So we also find out that the Clinton Climate Initiative or and the Clinton Foundation, of course, is involved. They're a partner with the C40 cities. And um, there's a very interesting YouTube up. It says, watch the 42nd President of the United States, William J. Clinton, founder of the Clinton Foundation and prominent champion of climate initiatives wish C40 a happy 10th anniversary. Johnson & Johnson is backing the genocide programs. Also, Suez in North America. Who is Suez? S-U-E-Z. They're in your country as well, but they're in North America also. They say that they operate across all 50 states and in Canada with thousands of employees dedicated to environmental sustainability. When you hear those words, you know it's genocide and leading the resource revolution, resource revolution. The company provides drinking water. I would not suggest you drink this water because they are involved in wastewater uh, collection and service. And they serve in the United States over 7 million people on a daily basis 
no wonder we're not able or not able to discuss these issues. We've all been chemically lobotomized through wastewater treatment and the idea of desalinization of ocean water. But this uh, Suez treats uh, 570 million gallons of water, uh, of wastewater each day. Also ICLE, many of you have heard of ICLE, International Council on Local Environmental Initiatives. They are a partner and they have partnered with C40 cities. Uh, they are bringing in the takedown of your city to all of your local governments. Your mayors of all of your cities are involved. Your city councils do not work for you. They work on the platform of eliminating jobs, creating homelessness, and being assaulted by weather weapons that are disfiguring our cities and causing global disruption and massive refugees worldwide. So ICLE, in June of 2011, uh, which is about the time that the C40 cities started, partnered, uh, ICLE part, partnered with the C40 cities, and uh, they, um, their plan was to, and is, to establish a global standard for accounting and reporting community scale greenhouse gas emissions. Now, I'm going to jump into something that I just discovered yesterday. You all need to know this if you don't. Uh, Google has a new tool to fight climate change. Google, just so you know, is descending on all of us globally by inventing a tool that will estimate greenhouse gas emissions for individual cities worldwide. Think of the increased frequencies of all of these technologies overhead. Google says the first step towards taking climate action is creating an emissions inventory. A program manager at Google Earth has said, understanding your current situation at the city scale and understanding what you can do. That's information problem, and that's a good place for Google to be. They, go, they say that so far, they've released estimates for five cities, including Pittsburgh, Buenos Aires, Mountain View, California, and they explain that they ex, uh, will expand the program to cover uh, cities worldwide. And they say, we envision an open search bar for users to search their own city in the future. So what we're going to see here is the ability to hone in through Google Earth and track and monitor people that they claim to be energy cheats. We talk about water, basically also under this. Excessive use of water, you're going to be considered, consider, considered an energy cheat. We have discovered that the idea of minimizing the availability of water is sadly being taught to all of our children and most people around the world don't realize that water is a renewable. We cannot let water uh, go forward with the continued illusion that they did with fossil fuels and petroleum because petroleum is also a renewable. We've all known that. But now they are creating the illusion that water is a finite resource. We have maps here. In fact, I have a, uh, a website called primarywater.org. We have halfway, half page flyers. Please translate them into your language. Pass them out far and wide. Send them to us so we can put them on primarywater.org in different languages to help other people. Because right now, the taking of water is going to minimize where you live and they're going to be killing millions and millions of people in the process of saying we are running out of water, just as what was told to all of us in Cape Town, South Africa, as a result of the uh, uh, people that live in Cape Town and the visual pictures that we saw uh, in our uh, fraudulent media reporting, uh, we saw lines of uh, villagers lined up at spigots in hopes to get a little bit of water in their plastic jugs. Well, that caused a tremendous amount of fear and a massive amount of, of uh, people fleeing the area, believing that they were running out of water. While we know that the World Bank has hired primary water experts to drill for primary water, also that is one of the reasons why the United States and NATO blew up uh, Libya's uh, eighth wonder of the world the Great Man-Made River Project. You will be able to see that on primarywater.org. 
wanted to eliminate the understanding that Muammar Gaddafi had for his people in delivering fresh, clean, unadulterated water that comes from down below. It's a process of hydrogen and oxygen merging together, becomes a vapor, and must surface, surface through cracks and fissures. That's where we have um, uh, certainly uh, geysers that spray up uh, out of the ground forever, where we see oases in deserts, and where we see those beautiful waterfalls at tops of mountains, oftentimes in Hawaiian islands where it doesn't snow, cascading endlessly. We have to understand the best news you're going to hear from me is the idea that we have fresh, clean, continuous drinking water available, and we must get to it. The areas in the world that have had access to primary water have a much higher IQ. They're not drinking the municipal water supplies that are fluoridated and poisoned with human waste and Big Pharma's ability to extend its death through our human waste and reuse uh, recycling. This is Big Pharma's opportunity to yet again uh, use its uh, poisons and toxins, chemo, and all of the toxins that we flush down our toilets and end up ultimately in the water supply. So I, I'm urging everybody, we're in the grips of something enormous. The kill is on. It's being amplified. And there are policies. And you can read their plans. These are criminal plans. You can look in advance of the kinds of weapons that will be used in your area. We have to harden up against this. We have discovered there are a number of laboratories within the United States that have vaults where they um, are hardened up against anticipated increased dust storms. Yes, dust storms are going to be amplified because it's an additional way to, to spread toxins and poisons. Yes. They talk about how they're having breathing um, appar apparatuses available as well. So you heard my urgent plea. Um, I'm sorry that I have just flowed like I have right now. I certainly want to talk to you guys about what you understand where you are. We will talk uh, much longer next time. It's just because Ule, is, uh, his flight is uh, he's leaving quite soon. Uh, uh, Spain for Sweden, so it was uh, why we today could speak such a limited time. But uh, you you explain a lot of things. Uh, so thank you very much, and uh, uh, I believe the next interview with you will be within four four weeks. Uh, well, I would very much look forward to that, and Olay, have a very um, beneficial trip. I um, will pray for you and the expansion of people's minds to hear what we say. Uh, certainly, we have to wake up, and uh, more and more people need to wake up and prevent their death by lack of knowledge. So, um, Olay, I'm uh, I'm looking forward to an actual longer interview. I'm, I just had so much to say from the direct assaults here in Northern California as a result of the fires and the enormity of the resilient plans that have been foisted upon us here. I guess I would say one final thing. Everyone needs to look at what's happening in Puerto Rico right now. If you type in Puerto Rico and resilient plans, you find that they have been descended upon and they're being asset stripped. They're being fully reorganized and they will be completely rebuilt, all new uh, buildings in a very confined area. The people are unaware that they have, that sadly, they have agreed through the Delphi technique. Whenever you see advisory meetings, you need to understand that these are uh, fronted by paid facilitators to put through policies that they lead you to believe that you have uh, our participation process in as the public, but you do not. And when I was looking up Puerto Rico and looking up at some of the plans, I saw photographs in the plans of the Delphi technique and the types of meetings that they were engaged with thinking that they were part of the recovery of Puerto Rico, they're not. They're not. So 
I just really refer everyone to StopTheCrime.net. And Ola, um, I really would want to talk with you further, again, listening to your interviews and all the work that you've been doing for so, so many years. Uh, I really hope that there's a way that we can work together on a more frequent basis. For sure, I would love to speak to you too. Uh, the only problem is I'm on my way to the airport so shortly, so that's, that's the reason why. But thank you ever so much for joining us tonight, and I'm really looking forward to uh, our next interview. I'll, I will also see if I can get you on other shows that I've got contact with. So, And thank you so much for everything you do for us all. Well, thank, thank you both. I think we're all here doing all we can for humanity and for our children and our grandchildren. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I'm, I'm so honored to link with, with you, and I would be honored to participate in any way with any programs or interviews that you would have there as an opportunity to get the information out as well. Um, sure. And again, I'm, it's with great respect and honor that I, I'm invited in on this conversation. So thank you both. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Sarah. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Safe journey. Thank you. Bye-bye.